Oxalates, or oxalic acid salts, are natural compounds found in many foods. They are part of the defense systems of plants and are therefore part of our everyday standard diet tucked away in the vibrant spinach leaves in our salads, the crunchy almonds in our snacks, and even in that dark chocolate we like to indulge in. Now, you might be wondering if they're so prevalent, what's the big deal about oxalates? Well, in moderation, they don't pose a problem. Our bodies are equipped to process and eliminate them. However, when we consume them in large amounts, they can become a thorn in our side, or more accurately, a stone in our kidneys. Imagine this. When oxalates journey through our digestive system, they have a tendency to latch onto calcium, creating a compound known as calcium oxalate. Sounds harmless enough, right? Not quite. This compound is the primary ingredient in the majority of kidney stones. Yes, those painful, unwelcome intruders that can cause so much discomfort and distress. But it's not just about kidney stones. High levels of oxalates can also interfere with the absorption of essential minerals in our bodies. They can bind with calcium and magnesium, preventing our bodies from soaking up these crucial elements, often resulting in deficiencies. This can lead to a range of health issues, including bone weakness and muscle function disorders. Although the body benefits from absorbing a variety of nutrient-rich foods, oxalates are one of the waste byproducts that provide no direct benefit and need to be kept in check. Even though our bodies are quite capable of handling oxalates as long as we don't overload them. Plant-based diets that are high in oxalates can lead to an imbalance and health issues such as kidney stones, gout to name a few. So let's take a closer look at how we can manage our intake and maintain that crucial balance. As previously stated, oxalates can impact health by forming crystals or stones as well as affecting vital mineral absorption. The issues is the accompany many plant-based nutritious foods, from spinach to almonds. But allowing their levels in our body get too high, they can cause trouble. The primary health concern related to high oxalate levels is the formation of kidney stones. Ever wondered why kidney stones are so painful? Well, it's because they're essentially small, hard deposits that form in the kidneys. The main culprit behind their formation? You guessed it, calcium oxalate. When oxalates bind with calcium in our bodies, they can form these problematic stones. And trust me, they're something you want to avoid if you can. But the impact of oxalates on our health isn't limited to kidney stones. They can also interfere with our body's ability to absorb minerals. You see, when oxalates bind with minerals like calcium and magnesium in our digestive tract, they form insoluble crystals. These crystals can't be absorbed by our bodies, which means we miss out on these crucial nutrients. Now you might be thinking, but I eat a balanced diet, so I'm getting plenty of minerals, right? Well, not necessarily. If your diet is high in oxalates, these compounds could be preventing your body from absorbing the minerals you need. This can lead to deficiencies, which can have a wide range of health implications from muscle cramps to weakened bones, but don't worry, there's plenty you can do to manage your oxalate levels and reduce these risks. We'll be covering that in detail shortly, so stay tuned. Oxalate dumping is when the body starts expelling stored oxalates rapidly. This fascinating yet somewhat complex process is often triggered when there's a significant reduction in dietary intake of oxalates, such as with keto or carnivore diets. You see, our bodies are quite the masters of adapting to our dietary habits. Also important to point out, not everyone will experience issues during periods of oxalate dumping. So when we consume high levels of oxalates over time, our bodies store some of these compounds. But when we suddenly lower our oxalate intake, our body responds by purging these stored oxalates Hence the term oxalate dumping. Now you might be thinking, isn't it good to get rid of excess oxalates? And you'd be right to an extent. However, the rapid release of oxalates can cause discomfort and other symptoms, much like a detox reaction. It's a bit like cleaning out a dusty attic. It's beneficial in the long run, but you might sneeze a lot during the process. So what does oxalate dumping look like? Well, it's not as clear cut as you might think. Symptoms can vary from person to person, depending on factors like their overall health, metabolism, and how drastically they've reduced their oxalate intake. 
However, some common symptoms can include joint and muscle pain, skin rashes, or even mood swings. For some, gastrointestinal issues can also occur, such as bloating, constipation, or diarrhea. Now, it's important to note that these symptoms can also be caused by other health issues. So, if you're experiencing these symptoms, it's crucial to consult with a healthcare provider to get a proper diagnosis. Remember, self-diagnosis can often do more harm than good. Instead of drastically cutting oxalates from your diet, consider reducing your intake slowly over time, so experts suggest around 10% at a time. This gives your body a chance to adjust and lessens the likelihood of a major oxalate dump. Think of it as gently cleaning that dusty attic, one box at a time, to avoid a sneezing fit. In conclusion, oxalate dumping is a process that occurs when our body sees the opportunity to expel stored oxalates rapidly. Managing oxalate intake through diet is crucial. Now, this doesn't mean you need to completely eliminate these from your diet, but moderation is key, especially if you're prone to kidney stones or have a metabolic disorder that affects oxalate processing. In contrast, foods low in oxalates are safer choices. These include apples, avocados, bananas, and most meats and dairy products. With this in mind, keto diets or a gradual switch to carnivore lifestyle would reduce the oxalate intake, but be mindful to do so gradually, say, over a few weeks or so. But dietary adjustments aren't the only strategy. Hydration plays a vital role in managing oxalate levels. Drinking plenty of fluids, particularly water, helps dilute the concentration of oxalates in the urine, reducing the risk of kidney stone formation. So make sure you're drinking enough water throughout the day. And if you're someone who struggles to drink plain water, you could try adding a slice of lemon or cucumber for a touch of flavor. In addition to these strategies, it's important to maintain a balanced intake of calcium. While it may seem counterintuitive, a diet too low in calcium can actually increase the risk of kidney stones. This is because calcium in the digestive tract binds to oxalate from food, preventing it from being absorbed into the blood and subsequently the urine. Finally, remember that everyone's body is different. What works for one person may not work for another. If you're considering making significant changes to your diet, or if you suspect you might have a problem with oxalates, it's always best to consult with a healthcare provider. They can provide personalized advice based on your specific needs and circumstances. Staying well hydrated helps prevent kidney stones by diluting the concentration of oxalates in urine. As we have already identified, to prevent oxalate dumping, it's important to stay hydrated and reduce oxalate intake gradually rather than abruptly. Taking a step-by-step -step approach can help your body adjust to lower oxalate levels without triggering a sudden dump of stored oxalates. Start by identifying high oxalate foods in your diet and swapping them out for lower oxalate alternatives. Remember, hydration is your friend. Regular water intake can dilute oxalates in the urine, reducing the risk of stone formation. Thank you for watching our explainer regarding oxalates. Hope you will consider subscribing as we have plenty of this type of content coming up.